are you going to do with these red stars? Yes, there are so many questions about these red stars. What to do with them in this week's Monday mailbag. So definitely going to answer those questions. Plus, Black Bolt and humans and so much more, guys. And if you guys are ready for this week's Monday mailbag Q&A, you know what to do. Let's go smash it. Valley Flyer. What is up, Valley Maniacs? Valley Flying here. I am back. Welcome to the channel. Yes, it is Monday. It is mailbag time. I hope you guys had a great weekend. But it, I am back and we're going to answer some questions, all of your questions from the mailbag. Now, if you guys have not asked a question and want to, make sure you guys check out the link down below to Discord. You guys can answer your ask your questions in the mailbag section down there. Uh, there's also some links to support the channel. Bluestacks, that promotion is ending very soon, guys. Uh, use that code so you guys can get entered for that giveaway. Uh, it is a great program. Get rewarded for some of your purchases. There's also Bluestacks. It is my emulator of choice when you are playing on your PC, but let's get to your questions. There's a lot of them, guys. So some of these answers may be shorter than usual. I'm gonna try to keep them shorter than usual. I hope I don't run on too much, but let's get to the questions. All right, first question, Valley Flying. So Casino stole your mailbag idea and his new Ask Casino YouTube series. Can he expect a visit from you and your baseball bat to talk about his blatant gimmick infringement? Probably not. Man, why are you so violent? Why? Are you... It's all love here, guys, all love here. <laughs> Uh, next question. Hey, Valley Flying, long time watcher. First question here. Well, thank you for asking your question for the first time. Uh, Sabretooth Mystique moved over to Marauder's team now with the Symbiote Spider-Man, regrouping Carnage Venom to a Spider-Verse team, looking for some options. I started playing after Kingman and Crossbones were meta, so I don't have them all powered up. Are they worth investing in the game? No. So to answer the question about Kingpin and Crossbones, probably not right now. Maybe if they get like a Hydra rework confirmed, then maybe, but not right now, not for this team. Uh, and uh, where do you put the last two Brotherhood things? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave Carnage and Venom there for right now. I'm probably not gonna build Symbiote Spider-Man too much and build up that team too much yet. Uh, I do want to see what else comes out. Maybe we will be getting more Brotherhood characters. Maybe we'll get more Symbiote characters. So I'm going to be kind of wait and see with this whole team. And uh, you can go ahead and do what you want. But that, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to I'm gonna wait and see and see what else comes out to round out these teams. Next question. Valley Flying, your content is great. Thank you, brother. Also, thanks for la launching a podcast. And we did launch that podcast. We're Right now, we're doing uh, recaps of the weekly news update that I do with Casino. So check that out. It should be uh, You should be able to search for Valley Flying Smashing Time on all of your favorite podcast stuff. So uh, it's now I can listen to it in, uh, in the car. So I'm glad you guys can do that. Uh, now, do you think Fox Nix will do another major quality of life update like multiple daily auto challenges, auto basic only, sort tunes, and search gear inventory? Um... I don't know. I'm kind of a pessimist when I uh, have my expectations for Fox next. So I always expect very little, which is why I'm happy when they do something. So I, I think uh, what they mentioned in this recent Strike Time video, they are doing a, a few things for the quality of life, but I wouldn't expect a major thing. But if it does happen, I would pleasantly welcome it and be pleasantly surprised next question on the mailbag 20k subscriber video i asked about fox next releasing skins for characters either cosmetic or having kits under them with the release of symbiote spider-man in the game do you think this trend of multiple uh, versions of the same character with different kits is a good thing or a bad thing i'm not in favor of it i, I think if you ask the community i think it'd probably be about 50 50 but i'm on a side that's not too in favor of but i'm not like Oh, this character, this is going to ruin the game. Like, oh, if they're going to do it, fine. If they're not going to do it, fine. But if you ask my opinion, I would I would not want multiple versions of the same character. But yeah, the game's still playable, even if they're in there. So I'm not I'm not super uh, passionate about if they add that or not. Uh, next question. Do you think taking characters at lower gears, two to three gold stars to higher gears, and beyond is worth it. I'm deciding on Colossus, but don't know if it should beef him up because he'll just be at two stars. Really depends where you're at and what you're trying to build. Uh, in your situation, I'm kind of like that with my Colossus. Mine's at a four, four gold stars and the rest of the X-Men are very, very high. So I, I get you. And if you're if you're going for a certain goal to try to round out at X-Men for, or for something specific, then I would say, yeah, but yeah, it's kind of a placeholder until you could get more stars. He's never going to be that uh, tank that he's supposed to be until that point. So 
it, it can be if you're trying to re, uh, round out a team, but uh, if just for taking up random characters, if they're random, then I would say no. Uh, ooh, long one. I've heard you say alliances should probably stop donations for Star Tech once they have maxed out the tech. Why? In my opinion, it's very short-sighted to people uh, to tell people to stop donations for Stark Tech. Even if an alliance has a maxed out their Stark Tech, their donations are free as long as every member donates. And that, that's technically true, but my argument is what are you going to need this stuff for? Yeah, they may raise the cap and then you may get that, but I don't know. I think uh, they don't need that gold and, you know, for a resource that you may or may not need. I don't know if it's the best thing, but... I don't know. Listen to your alliance. If my alliance is going to do it, then this is another thing I'm not super passionate about. If my alliance is going to keep donating through, even if everything's maxed out, everybody has their stuff maxed out, I'll, I'll just keep donating. But if they're not, then I'm fine with that too. But I'm going to defer to the alliance leadership for this one, guys. Next question, Valley Flying. I've been a free-to-play player for over a year and a half. My roster is sitting comfortably at 1.7 million TCP. Started to feel a little burnout from the repetitive nature in the game, but I absolutely love it. Any advice on managing burnout and keep myself motivated to keep playing? So I guess it depends what you want from this game. For me, one of the biggest things that I enjoy is chasing all these new characters, building up these new teams. And uh, so the game doesn't really get too stale. A lot of the everyday stuff does become repetitive. So for the answer, I guess just uh, focus on what you like. Determine what it is that you like out of this game and if you could reduce time of that, then that's great. I think one of the things that helped me reduce time is uh, finding as many things to play on auto. Uh, raids in particular, Blitz, uh, not really uh, not really Arena or War, but uh, you know, just trying to find time to save the game. Uh, auto, auto has helped me a lot, but uh, yeah, just focus on what you like. And if you don't like the game, then there's a lot of other games. So just focus on that. Just have fun. It's all about having fun. These are games. Next question. Thanks for the content. I have three questions for you. Uh, hopefully for a solution. So I actually read this question earlier and a lot of it has to do with uh, making nodes farmable. And uh, this question came up before that strike time video. So in that they talked about Nexus coming soon. So I think that answers a lot of the questions here. But what else do you think Fox Nexus could put it into those nodes? I think uh, what they put into every other node, character shards or gear shards. Can you please put this in a video? Uh, yes. Next question. What's up, Valley Flying? Wondering what Chief Wars you put into Black Bolt. Passive is a given, but what others are you thinking of? I'm actually thinking of doing all of them. I have his passive and his ultimate right now. His special and his basic, not super appealing to me, but kind of like Ultron. I think I'm going to be using this character a lot, so I might just put all of the T fours into this character. But I think the passive, like you said, is a no brainer, and I I'm liking these. This is the uh, damage boost that the ultimate gives. So I'm doing those two. And down the road, I might do the special and the basic. Uh, next question, Valley Flying. Just pulled a seven red star wasp. What team would she work best with? I'm at a total loss. Love the great work. So unfortunately, wasp is not a great, great character. She's not a bad character. She's, she's good, but she doesn't really have a lot of synergy with too many characters except for Ant-Man and is not really on a meta team. So, you know, her kit doesn't really uh, make use of a lot of synergies. So with that said, what team would she work best with? I would probably start with that Ant-Man synergy because uh, those guys are actually kind of tricky at Alliance Wars. It's very easy to underestimate them. So I'd start with that. And then I'd go back to Ant-Man's Avenger synergy and see if I could piece together a team to make with them. I don't know if Wasp is strong enough to base, to change your whole farming focus around her and change your whole building strategy around her, but uh, I would probably put her with characters that don't probably don't have a home on your roster. So that Avengers team is probably what I would focus on with Wasp. Uh, next character, the next question. Hello, brother. What is one of my favorite parts of the game is opening an Ultimus Orb and getting shards for a character I already have at seven stars. Oh, I love that as well. That is that is so awesome. What is your favorite part of the game? I think it's opening all these red star orbs and getting these all these duplicates. That 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 is probably my favorite part of the game. What uh, nutrition wise do you like to eat? High carb, high protein. Um, I do more moderate protein, higher fat and more lower carb. Not so low that I get into ketosis, but just try to keep the carbs a little lower and the fat a little higher. I uh, hear there are benefits of intermittent fasting. Do you incorporate all that into your routine? I've heard intermittent fasting benefits as well, but I haven't done my own research, but I've had a lot of anecdotal evidence coming from different peoples that say it helps with different things. So kind of doing that sort of, try to get at least a 12, 12 hour gap between 
uh, every day, my meals. I know that more ideal is a longer time frame, like a 16 hour, but I try to get at least 12. Um, yeah, and I, I try to do all these things. So incorporate a lot of different things, and I, I think it's I think it's going well. I, I have a lot of stamina at jujitsu. I, I feel strong at the gym, and yeah, I'm still staying kind of lean. So I, I think whatever I'm doing is working. Next question. Hey, brother, I'm one of the general public that can't get Black Bolt at the moment due to the paywall. It's kind of wondering if you think Karnak would be a viable tune even without Black Bolt outside of the Inhumans. Really interested in character. One of my favorite characters in comics as I'm a martial arts enthusiast. The animations look badass, especially the kill animation. So um, he's not that bad of a character outside of an Inhumans team without Black Bolt, but you really lose that big ultimate of his. I think the big benefit you get from that ultimate is that huge huge focus increase that he gets when black bolt is on the team so you're kind of losing that you still have some good things that he does with his passive flipping some debuffs but the best thing that he does is lost without black bolt and the rest of the humans there so uh he's an okay character he's not one of the worst without that full inhumans team but if you're not gonna run him or you don't plan to eventually run him on that team i probably wouldn't put too many resources in, into him unfortunately uh, next question what is the optimal time to start hoarding both gold and resources i think uh you shouldn't even think of hoarding until you're doing pretty good at your current arena and current raid level so in your arena shard are you doing well then that that is one less uh priority that you need to focus on right away and in raids are you keeping up with the rest of alliance and if you are then that's another thing you don't have to really focus on right away and then at that point you can start golding a hoarding golden gear but before that I, I wouldn't even think about it uh next question how much you scored in ultimate 7 and is it 30 35 million good for ultimate 7 uh 30 to 35 is really good uh, on bad days i'm about 10 million on good days it's around that 30 mark and it just kind of depends on how quick i get into the lane before my other two lane mates get in there but uh, 35 good million it's very very good score Next question. Hey, brother, love the videos. Been following your free to play guides. Help me build my teams. Almost enough to build Shuri and Invisible Woman mags on the next go. Wanted to start my legendaries. And question regarding Enter the Darkness while playing free to play. Defenders is the best team to go for that with or what? Uh, Enter the Darkness, I guess, just take in whoever you have. That one's based on star levels, if I remember. I've been told that a team with good stains is going to go a long way. My defenders are currently. 10 11 6, 6, 6, 4, and should i start throwing some t4s into that team uh not specifically for enter the darkness uh if you have them there ready uh there are some t4s that i think are good on that team uh i think the passive for iron fist is a very good one the passive for daredevil is a very good one the passive for punisher is a very good one uh, i think those are eventually t4s that you eventually would want to do for that team but not specifically for Fear of the Darkness. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're a good team you could throw into that uh, game mode. It's an earlier game mode, so cool stuff. Uh, next question, is it worth building up the Inhumans? I don't have Black Bolt since the Asgardians are not farmable right now. Probably won't unlock him for a while. Uh, it depends if you want to build for right now, because I don't think they're going to benefit you right now because they're not really farmable. You don't have Black Bolt, uh, but I think eventually they will be valuable to you. Eventually, you're going to get Black Bolt. Eventually crossing my fingers hopefully they will become farmable and uh, yeah you're gonna want to build them up because they're a great team but they're not really gonna benefit you right now so uh the answer to the question depends it depends if you're looking more medium and long term then start to build them but if you're looking more short term uh probably build another team until these guys uh, you could get more gold stars for these guys next question when do you think the next avalanche orb will be i'm currently sitting on about 200 orbs with 80 of them being gold orbs should i hang on to them go ahead and open them I would probably open your gold orbs. You're, you're you're probably handicapping yourself a lot on these milestones by not spending the gold and not getting those uh, daily milestones with that. So I'd probably open them, but the rest of them, if you don't need them, you probably could hoard them. Like the premium orbs, resto orbs, some of these raid orbs, I don't open them all the way because I don't need them right now. So if it's something you need like gold, I probably would. But if it's something you don't need like premium orbs, red star orbs, uh, maybe the orange gear orbs, then yeah, you could, you could probably start holding on to them if you don't really need them. Uh, next question. What is up, my brother? You always have great videos like the mailbag news. Uh, appreciate your question is uh, what is up with Psylocke? Uh, your Cyclops. I know he is coming in the patch, but I hear sooner than later. Milestones event blitz. I have not heard anything uh, rumors or seen anything in data mines to know an exact date or his release method. I think the general feeling of the community is that he'll be a milestone character, and I'm kind of leaning towards that myself. But 
Uh, nothing official about his release uh, or unofficial that I've heard either. Uh, next question. I'm hearing a lot about Boycani Scopely. What are your thoughts and when do we start doing it? I don't know. I haven't heard anything about that. I don't, I don't think they've done anything yet to be very concerned about. Maybe in, in, in previous games, but not in this game yet. So I think we, we hold off until they do something bad, right? I, 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 don't, I don't see a point at this. I don't see a purpose right now. <laughs> Next question. So Scopely has bought over MSF. What is going to happen to the game moving ahead? I don't see much happening to the game in the next three to six months. I mean, that's just my prediction. I mean, they, Scopely could come in tomorrow and just turn this game on its head. I don't see it doing that, though. I don't think that's the good business move for them to do that. So I think they play it safe, keep it status quo for a little bit, and then... I don't know, long term, what what could happen? It, it gets a little less free to play friendly because that's kind of the reputation in other games. So I don't know. I, I think that's I think that's the likely scenario. Next question. Thank you for all, all your amazing content. Wonder if you could share your strategy for how you approach leveling, gearing up a new character or a new team. So mine's a little different because I'm making content and I want to try to get the newest, latest team for the content I produce. If I was doing this, uh, just try to build up my roster differently uh what i would do is just focus on one team one character at a time gearing that character then gearing the next one then gearing the next one then gearing the next one um get them all to that usual place that you could get all their uh, ability to at least six 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 four uh, but then after that uh just build one at a time so that that is what i would do if i was really focused on building a team and uh, maximizing my roster not just building a team or building my roster for content like i do right now Next question. I see uh, Daredevil shows in Nexus 8-9. Does this mean we are getting Nexus soon? This was a question asked, asked uh, before the Strike Time video came out. So, yes, it does look like Nexus is coming out very soon. Next question. Valley Fly and Heaven Arena question. My enemy team always has Ultron and Phoenix. They're in the teams that I'm at. Currently in top 20. Anyways, Phoenix also provides stealth on her first turn, usually to Minerva, the purpose I want to focus. For whatever reason, her stealth seems to add like eight more turns. Uh, any suggestions on a team working against this annoying stealth? So before Black Bolt and Sinister became uh, a thing, I think the best thing to do was get Juggernaut, Magneto, and go in and use Magneto special on whoever you want to uh, attack either Ultron or Minerva based on this team and probably the team that you're using is who I would target if I had Black Bolt probably would not really need to focus on Ultron but if I don't have Black Bolt uh, I'm probably going to go after Ultron with Magneto special and Minerva might bring him back to life but uh, I'm just going to keep killing him until she's he's dead Minerva's probably only going to have one uh, resurrection for the whole battle so she might do Ultron but yeah use Magneto special on the target you want and uh, that should disrupt them. Then when Phoenix puts everybody to stealth, then there'll be one target that you can attack with your team. So that, that is my suggestion uh, based on the information you have in your question here, brother. All right, how will you arrange your brotherhood and hero brawlers now that spider first will be valid with symbiote Spider-Man? Uh, I'm probably gonna wait, like I said earlier. Uh, Spider-Verse, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep them in their current teams. I'm gonna keep Carnage and Venom on Brotherhood. Uh, Spider-Man is gonna be with my Hero Brawlers and Miles and Symbiote Spider-Man. I'll probably make some random team with those two characters. Uh, next question, beginner player here. Got my defenders up to 6664, building Guardians and Sinister 6. Should I invest my T4s in defenders or save them as they're not much for, useful for later game stuff? And T4s are pretty rare. My focus is on Dark Dimension and Arena. So, uh, yeah, if, uh, if you're focused on Dark Dimension Arena, defenders aren't, you're probably not going to be using them for that much longer if you're still using them. So, uh, defenders, you probably want to start switching away from that team, going either Guardians or Sinister Six. Those are both good options. As far as T4s, though, I did mention three T4s earlier for defenders. I think those are good, like minimal investments for those defenders. I think you do need to at least at the minimum do Iron Fist passive. The other two, not as important, but I really, really like Punisher's passive and Daredevil's passive does make a difference in certain battles with that extra speed. So uh, if you just want to do the minimum, I think that would be good. But just know that they're, you know, you know, you know, defenders, they don't last that long. They're Once you get to mid game, end game, defenders aren't all that anymore. Uh, next question. I watched the video. I'm pleased with all the announcements. What are you looking forward to? Any thoughts on the new game mode? What it could be? I'm looking forward to the new game mode. And I think the speculation is like a one versus one 
alliance war where it's not the whole alliance going against another alliance it's you versus one player mano e mano and see who wins i think that is what it would be i think that's the, what a lot of the speculation is so if that is what they were talking about the new game mode that is what i would be looking forward to next question working on guardians for enter the darkness i have minerva and is gear 12 and two red stars i have mantis that is gear 12 three red stars seven yellow stars for enter the darkness two who could be who is better to get to gear 13 uh minerva minerva her 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 ultimate is a percentage based attack that does uh, a lot of healing so regardless of her red stars or her gold stars she will still do the same amount of damage with that so get her up to gear 13 she is probably the best character for fear the darkness Next question, Scopely owns MSF. Is it possible to ask them to do a rework on Lady Sif? Yes, Scopely, can you please do a rework on Lady Sif? I don't like the way she looks. I like Jamie Alexander better. Next question, who would win in a fight with 100 duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? Oh my goodness, ducks are violent. A duck-sized, oh, a horse-sized duck. My God, that would be so scary if you saw that walking around. Uh, have you heard a new Marvel game called Realm of Champions? I have. If so, what do you think it'll be like? A clone of MSF or something else, something done differently? I think it's going to be a little different. It looks like it's a three on three. So just right there, it's going to be a little different. And I think you're able to take certain elements of different Marvel characters and combine them into your characters. It's, it's hard to tell from the trailer exactly what it's going to be, but it looks fun. And if uh, I start playing it, I have fun. I definitely start covering on this channel. So. Uh, interested to see, curious to see what is, what's going to be happening with that game. Uh, Credit Gate 2020, when do you think we will get to 10 gold red star credits? I think this week at the earliest, I think more likely scenario will be next week or the week after, uh, just based on some of the responses to some of their bugs in the past. Uh, and they did say it's a calendar. So I think that they uh, are going to stretch that thing out as far as possible so they could get uh, more engagement out of this. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get 10 credits right away. I think it's going to be 10 maybe over 15 days or 30 days or whatever. But yeah, they're, they're going to stretch this thing out, guys. They always stretch these out. Uh, next question. Do you think war will be more interesting if, it, if more characters had war specific abilities? No. Uh, what are your thoughts on not being able to use those awesome abilities outside of war? So I think this is, this is the suggestion that was made uh, a while ago was having the all of these bonuses active in blitz and i would be in favor of that I, i'm not in favor of war specific abilities i mean war is something that happens three times a week so you're only able to really use those three times a week if it's a defensive war ability you're never seeing that you might see your stats increase on your war stats but yeah you're never ever seeing this so i don't like those abilities and i hope they do less of them i want stuff to be available in all game modes Valley flying 180 day player running tech Nerva in arena will normally finish in the 10 to 25 range. Just unlock Magneto. Would I be better off running Brotherhood sticking with tech Nerva or a combo of the two pivoting to a team like Supernatural or Asgard is most offenses I see are tech Nerva as Guardians or Fantastic Four if that helps. Uh, I with that as Guardians, I see you needing Phoenix as soon as possible, but I, I that as Guardians will be tough to get through. So with that said, if you can pivot to Asgardians, that would be preferable. If uh, if there's some way that you could pivot to Inhumans, I know Black Bolt's kind of an issue. Uh, they're a good counter to Asgardians, but I think your best bet would be to go with a hybrid. I know way back in the day, uh, the combo that I mentioned earlier, Magneto and uh, Juggernaut in there with that special of Magneto uh, really worked really, really well before Ultron and uh, some of these newer characters, Black Bolt and Mr. Sinister came a thing. So. I would start running a hybrid, put Magneto in there, and based on your power level, maybe putting a Rocket, maybe putting Star-Lord, maybe some other characters like a Vision, or if you have a Hela in there, those, those characters would work good. But I think for you, a hybrid squad would work the best. All right, next question. With both Casino and his new Ask Casino and Tana and his new Tana Talks both coming up with highly original video series where you can ask them anything and they will answer your questions. Jeez. Are you going to come up with such new and original videos to get views like they did? Yes, I, I've come up with something very, very original. 
Uh, I could spend a bunch of money and challenge other content creators to open some orbs with me. And another series that I was thinking of is retiring and then unretiring and then retiring and unretiring. And let me know if either of those sounds original and uh, cool, guys. Next question. When facing as guardians in Blitz Arena, what order should I be taking that out in Hella first? Uh, Hella first is a good strategy. I've used that and it has worked, especially Arena and Blitz will be a little better because in War on Defense, Hella is summoning an extra Greg every time you take out another Asgardian. So not as much in War, but uh, I'm either going after Hella or Thor. Both of those are very good options. And the way I pick is just kind of who's ever available first. If, uh, if they're both available, I'm probably going after Thor first, uh, but Hella, Hella's a good target as well. So both, both of those work and I've won both I have one going after each of those characters first. Uh, next question. What are the silliest new mistakes you have heard of in MSF? My shame is that in my first three months of the game, I didn't realize you could choose who to target. Oh, yeah, that's a rough one. Uh, for me, it was not realizing that uh, the order you placed your characters in mattered uh, because there are chain attacks in this game. There are Jason attacks in this game. And I don't know, I made a video about it. Shameless plug, guys. But that video was uh, right before that was when I realized the what uh, all the placement and stuff meant. So that was probably months after I was playing. So yeah, that, that one uh, that one was a little weird as well for me. Our next question. Hey, brother, I hope I have an easy one. We'll be given two free six red star characters from the store when and if they show up with RNG. At least that's what I hope. I do want to do one right away. I have a choice of three characters right now. Uh, who would you choose? I have a five red star Thanos, Storm, and Scientist Supreme. My alliance doesn't do Ultimus 7 at all, so I never use a Scientist Supreme. I use Thanos all the time in Ultimus 6, and I do use Storm in Arena. So which out of three would you choose to make the first six red star? So before we get into the rest of your characters, uh, based on your usage, I think Th uh, Thanos would be the best pick for that. Now, with that said, uh, I know I don't use my Thanos that much right now. Uh, he does fall off when you get to late game, but since you guys are in Ultimus 6, I would say you guys are probably more in mid game right now. And mid game, that six star Thanos is really going to benefit you a lot. So uh, that is one thing to consider, or you could save it for another character that's going to really benefit you more in mid game. Uh, the other characters here, Green Goblin, Black Widow, Rescue, Killmonger, I probably wouldn't be really going too hard for them. So I would either do Thanos, knowing that he's not going to be as good once you get to endgame, or uh, do just hold for another character too. You get a five star another character and they happen to show up in the store. Next question. Hey, Valley, I uh, had a thought I posted here during the holidays, but forgot to repost the question in the next mailbag. As a person who long seven starred Wolverine long ago and finally just seven starred Hulk, it would be nice if Foxnick switched out the calendars, uh, the characters on dailies and achievements, respectively. At the same time, I believe new players should have the same opportunity to max these characters out. The solution I came up with was was that a player maxed out these characters and dailies and achievements would automatically switch to another. So say you max out Wolverine and dailies, the shards would switch to Black Widows and then it was just to Thanos, etc. And achievements would work in a similar fashion. I think it would be a good way to allow newer players to catch up. Also, uh, keeping older players happy. What do you think? I think it is a good player friendly move. But again, kind of like I said, I, I tend to think of more the pessimist view. I don't think this is something that Foxnet is going to do. I think this is too player friendly, but I hope I'm wrong. This this does sound like a cool idea. Next question. Uh, Yo, Valley Flying been farming a hand in order to prepare for certain legendary characters. Why? Why? Uh, maybe it's true, but I feel like the odds of saying shards have gone down. I use refreshes on the nodes every day and refresh my energy as well. It kills me to use 200 energy to get uh, zero shards in return one time. Okay, but when it happens repeatedly, it does suck. Did they make a change? Not that I'm aware of now. I don't know if I fully believe that... Uh, RNG seed theory, but I, I, if I am running a bad, um, get a bad run, get like zero shards of a character when I've done, I've used a hundred energy or something, uh, I'm superstitious enough to not do any more runs and do something else in the game, close the game, open the game, then come back and farm. And usually sometimes the, the RNG is a little better, but uh, I don't know. Maybe it's just a placebo effect that's going on, but that's what I do. And I tend to, I think I have better RNG, but yeah, if, if I'm getting bad luck, I don't continue to farm. I farm later when I'm having better luck. 
Um, next, uh, uh, next question. Sorry, I'm having a problem with which teams I should invest my T4s in as Guardians or Fantastic Four. Do you have any suggestions to other teams to take up instead? My BKT is my main team. They're all T4 right now. Uh, keep up the good job. Smash the content. Oos. All right, so uh, two, two issues, I guess. So my main thing with T4s, uh, usage, it comes down to usage. If you're using these characters a lot, then uh, T4 them. As Guardians, very good team. I don't think you could go wrong with the T4s on that team. Only thing is Hella, Heimdall, Sif, not farmable in any way. So uh, keep that in mind. If the As Guardians are a team that you want to put the T4s in, you're not going to be able to really max them out. Fantastic Four, they are becoming farmable. Uh, I think as we are recording this, uh, three out of the four. Well, Two out of the four, and then Invisible Woman, and then it looks like Mr. Fantastic will become farmable later this week. So hopefully by the end of this week, all four will become farmable. Uh, they're also a great team. They're very good on war offense. So it really depends on what your next team you want to pivot to. I don't think you could go wrong with either of them, but do keep in mind that Fantastic Four is probably going to be fully farmable, and as Guardians are not. Uh, next question, Rip Kobe Bryant. Yes, we'll talk about that in the next question. Uh, one of my questions, Valley, one of my questions, Vader is my daddy. He used to make a lot of infographics for Casino back in the day that I get to play with. He's going through a lot lately. He's in a coma, brain injury, and he went through a lot of surgeries. And, uh, there's a GoFundMe link, guys. I'm going to put that down in the description if you want to help. Uh, Vader is my daddy out. It always sucks when uh, people aren't doing well. Um, next question, as a father and... Uh, of girls and a fellow athlete. I want to say uh, rip to Kobe Bryant and Gigi Bryant. My wife is pregnant with a girl now, and today is a sad day for all dads with daughters and the basketball world. Yeah, I mean, when I had kids, I, I looked at things in a very different light, and this is just sad, man. Anytime anybody's not doing good, anybody, anytime anybody passes away, uh, whether it be an athlete or especially kids, there's a lot of kids on that helicopter. And that's, the, that's the saddest thing. Kobe's kid, there's other kids. Um, they're there in a prime. It's always sad to see kids grow up. But yeah, I, I, this is not a story that I could follow too much because it just saddens me. I don't like looking at uh, sadness like this, but it, it sucks, man. I, I don't like this kind of news. Um, Valley Flying just found your channel a couple days ago. Love your videos, broski. Don't have a question more of something you wanted to look forward to. Get your opinion. Something they cannot wait for is the devs to release the vampire trade. That would be interesting. With the movies planned to come out later this year, uh, this year and the next year, uh, characters like Morbius, Blade, which I'm looking forward to the most. Uh, can't wait to see what happens. Yeah, it'd be interesting. I guess not really a question, but vampire trade that that could be very interesting, brother. Uh, next question. I'm at a point where my arena rank could go from 20 to 200 in a few hours. How do you manage to finish so high as possible every day? Um, each arena shard is different. Some are more competitive than others. Uh, obviously, you're in a very, very competitive arena shard. Uh, I'll tell you what I do, and maybe it'll help you and yours. Maybe it won't. I hope it helps you, but I, I just try to watch my rank throughout the day. If I notice it dropping, I'm going to do a few more battles. I'll try to keep it consistent. And then if I have time in that last hour or two hours, that's when I'm really going to start pushing for that uh, build up. So usually I use three charges throughout the day just to kind of maintain my rank. And then I'll push with those last two charges to uh, try to get up to the next tier and maybe even use cores if it makes sense to use cores to get up to the next tier. But that, that's what I do in arena and hopefully that helps you in your shard. It looks like it's super competitive though, brother. All right, hey, Valley Flying, I got 180 shards of Karnak from the first orb. What city heroes would you like to see added to help with Dark Dimension 3? Uh, I mentioned Moon Knight before. I would like to see Moon Knight added. Uh, Spider Gwen. Spider Gwen would be a cool character added and uh, She-Hulk. I don't know if she would get a city tag. She depends what direction Fox Nix wants to go. But if She-Hulk were on consideration for being added to the game soon, I would be very, very happy. Next question. With a supposed leak of Doctor Doom being a Dark Dimension 3 characters, uh, so hold on. I don't, I'm not sure if that's a leak. I think that's just uh, some things that people were speculating of. I don't think there was any official leaks or rumors that came out about Doctor Doom, but I, I, I'm with a lot of the community. I think just based on assumption that, that Doctor Doom will be a Dark Dimension 3 character, but I don't, I don't know if that ever was anything official. Uh, do you think that they are testing the waters with the rewards for the community and keeping the new character out to make kind of a surprise? It's possible. Um, I, I've said this a few different times that, that those, you know, not so lucrative rewards for Dark Dimension 3 
I think are not necessarily a bad thing because when I look at what uh, the farming that I had to do when I was really pushing for Ultron, it's not a fun time in the game for me. Just pushing for that every day, refreshing nodes. Uh, but once I unlocked Ultron, it was, it was a totally different game. It was very fun. So double-edged sword of having a character like this being released, uh, I think for that whole long farming time, it's not going to be a very fun experience. I, I know at least it wasn't a fun experience for me. So I'm, I'm hoping the rewards are not as good. But if it is Dr. Doom or some kind of meta character uh, as rewards for this mode, then I'm going to have to farm. I'm going to have to farm hard, guys. Uh, next question. This is about... The red stars. All right. These are my five red star characters. Who should I take to six? Uh, I think there's a few no brainer characters, guys. Phoenix is one of them. So that is one that you should do uh, for your promotion. If you ever see her show up in your store, once you get these credits, Captain Marvel, I think is another no brainer. Now there's two good characters that I think are no brainers. If you have the gold stars on them, which I don't, but uh, Black Bolt, Mr. Sinister. I think those are awesome, awesome characters if you have the gold stars on them and you can see the benefit right away. Uh, I think that'd be a very good character to build up. The rest of these characters, I don't think are no brainer. So it's going to be dependent on your roster and your usage. Magneto is okay, but I don't know if... Uh, I think there's other characters that will benefit from a stat boost a lot more than Magneto. Uh, Star-Lord, kind of same thing. Very good character like Magneto. But I don't know if he's really going to benefit from that stat boost. We talked about Thanos. Depending on what stage in the game you're at, it could be a very good investment. But Thanos is not the best character at the end game. Root is a good character, but I don't think he's going to benefit too much from that stat boost. Uh, I don't really see focus being a huge problem for him. And a lot of his stuff's not based on uh, his, his health. And a lot of these other characters, I just don't use too much to really recommend them so that's that's who i do I would, I would go phoenix and then i would wait for your next uh whoever you get lucky with five starters on last question valley flying would you use the 10 coins to make a four to a five and then a five to a six and hope for two good five red stars to make six or uh such as captain marvel phoenix so captain marvel phoenix like i said i think they are no-brainer characters I think the six red star characters are a little more rare. So I'm going to use this for two six red star characters. Uh, if I don't have the character that I want to upgrade, I'm just going to wait till a character comes up to five and then promote that character at that point. And that's that's what I think is going to do just because the rarity of this six red star character. And that is it, guys. I hope your question got answered. If it did not, make sure you check out the Discord. Uh, make sure you check out some of the other things that support the channel. Loot Cakes, Patreon. There's some Valley merch all over the place. And hey, guys, there are more videos coming on this channel. So if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Smash on that notification bell. Tell all your friends. Share this with your friends, guys. And I will see you guys next time. Check me out on social media. I put a bunch of stuff on there all the time. So Hulk fist bump, guys. Valley flying out.